All right, so I've got uh, Visual Studio open. And what I need to do is open the solution of this project. So you can go up to File, Open, Project. And on your flash drive, find your project. So CBDB 718, 713, whatever you want to call it. And inside you should see an SLN file. That's our solution file. That's what we're opening in Visual Studio, the SLN file. That should then find all of the pieces of your project. Is it from this week? Is it the one we're opening? I don't One question at a time. Anna? That's the one from last week you saved. Right? Yes, the one from Thursday. Uh, that's the one we want to open again. Carrie, what was your question? Oh, I just pulled off the part one you had up there. Um, yeah, in the network folder, you will see in our MAD2 class, you'll see CVDB part one, and then uh, where we ended up last time, 713. So I need 713 and part one. We need both, but right now part one is the completed <coughs> project from last month. It's not a Visual Studio project yet. All right, so I've opened my project from last Thursday in Visual Studio. Then from the network folder, I'm going to temporarily copy the part one to the desktop. So I'm getting a copy from part of part one from the network folder. We need to combine the work from last month with our project of this month. The folder from last month has a structure similar to the project of this month. Here it is from, from last month. Last month we had an index file, scripts, images, font, CSS. This month in the CSS folder we've got CSS, images, scripts, index. In the WW folder, I mean. So possibly we could just drop what's in the network folder into our project and it'll probably work. But I did say that there are very there are a lot of very important lines of code and things that we should not lose or our project won't work. So we'll be a little bit more judicious here. I want to uh, combine basically what's in a folder in the network with what's in a folder in our project. We will be able to drag and drop, but first if we look inside of the CSS folder of the part one, we've got images. So this is full of the jQuery mobile stuff and our unique colors and the images related to jQuery mobile. In the CSS folder in Visual Studio, we have an index CSS file with some basic styling. I'm going to drag and drop a copy of the items in the CSS folder from the network folder into the CSS folder of your CVDB project. That image folder are the graphics, the icons from jQuery Mobile. Which file? It is in the part one file from, uh, from last month. everything inside of the CSS folder, just drop it into the CSS folder. Drop that, drag and drop into the CSS folder. You should just copy paste or just move it? Both are the same, but drag and drop is a little faster. When we drag and drop, it will be deleted from the move file. No, because I'm saying in the CSS folder, you're going to copy or drag the stuff in the CSS folder All three into the CSS folder. Yeah. All three 
So now in the CBDB Visual Studio project, I've got the images of jQuery Mobile. I've got the, my jQuery Mobile custom colors and my jQuery Mobile framework. Next, from the old CBDB, I need, a, I need this fonts folder, and I need it on the same root level as index. So this whole folder of font, just drop it into www folder, so that it's on the same level as index. I'm going to drag from CBDB part 1 into Visual Studio CBDB www folder. Let's drop that. So now I've taken the font files from part 1 and put them into part 2. The images folder from part 1 is empty, so we do nothing there. Maybe we should move the fonts. <laughs> root level of the project to the root level of the project. Next, the scripts folder. If you open scripts, inside of there we've got index.js. We've got index.js, so that will be something we need to be careful of. We need to copy jQuery mobile files, jQuery files. So for the moment, for the moment, let's only copy the jQuery files into the scripts folder. If we were to copy the index.js, into there, it's going to overwrite it, and we don't want that. This index.js file has important things inside of it. So we'll get back to this index file in just a moment. What we'll do temporarily is, from the old part one, you can rename it index zero, or one, whatever, and then I'll drop it into the uh, scripts folder. So do not copy index into the scripts folder before you rename it to something else, or else they will erase each other. So I've renamed index from the old project, index 0. And I dropped it in here. We're going to need to combine these two. So don't drop it in without renaming it, or it will erase the old one, and you'll be in trouble. That's right, because eventually when we integrate it, we're going to move the stuff inside of index 0 <coughs> into index, so that it can read it. And lastly, we need, something, we need to do something similar for index HTML. Do not simply drop index into www. It has <coughs> an index file there that I want to, to keep. So from, from the old CBDB, I'm going to rename that to index 0. And then I'll drop it into the root level of the Visual Studio project. Once I copy those pieces over, you can close the old project, and then to confirm this is what your Visual Studio project should look like for the moment. We have index, index 0, index.js, index 0. We have the jQuery files, images, fonts, and then the CSS folder.
Okay, so we can start first with these index files. <coughs> index.js. So with these index.js files, we need to combine them. Basically, I'm going to take what's in what's in index zero and put it into index into regular index. So we need to open both of those files. If you open index.js, index zero, this has all of the code that made the original project work. Index without a number has what we started previously from Visual Studio. So we already have a function, and this immediately invoked function on line 5 in the new project. In the old index 0, it's there, so we don't need it. We have use strict, we have use strict. So basically all of this code, uh, we already have Cordova is ready, line 14. So basically we need to get from line 13 to the end, <clears throat> line 135, we need to copy from index 0, we need to copy where the var starts all the way to the very end, but not the end of the immediately invoked invoke function, just all of the code up to that point. I'm going to copy that, and in your new index.js I will paste it on line 25 and 26. I'm going to paste it after what already exists. So we took 130 whatever lines from the old index, JS, putting it into the new index, JS. Well, let's uh, think about it. If, I, if we don't know exactly what lines, let's think about what we need to do. In my case, lines 13 to 135. But thinking about what we need to do, we need to select where the var starts, right? We don't need console, we don't need these comments, we don't need function, immediately invoke function. We're starting from where the var is. And we're selecting everything except where the function, immediately invoke function, ends. So in my case, 13 to 30 to 135, but if we think about what we're copying, it should make sense. So we copied all of those lines into the onDeviceReady function. And uh, I put it right after the last received event element, so line 26. I'm going to save that file. I'm finished with this index 0. I copied what I needed out of it, I can close index 0. And once I've copied the code over, I don't need that file anymore. I've copied it into index.js, where, where I'm going to keep it and add more to it, so I don't need index 0. You can just click delete on the keyboard and get rid of index 0 after you've copied it over. For the HTML files, I need to do something very similar. So I'm going to close the index.js file, and then I need to open the, the index.html, both of the files, the old and the new. Uh, 
the new file has uh, the connections over to uh, you know, has the viewport already, it has the connections to Cordova and the basic JavaScript, and then it has the body of this div. This div is, is not necessary at all. Lines 18 to 24, this is not necessary, this is just that template file that comes with a brand new Visual Studio project. We have something better, we have the work that we did last last month. So I'm going to delete <coughs> completely that div. And from index 0, basically everything inside of body first. We need something up in the header, we'll get to that. But let's do body first. So everything from about line 24 where the body starts all the way down to 140, we'll get this script stuff in a moment, but we'll do this part first. Everything in the body and then down to 140, where the template ends. I'm going to copy that. That's what's replacing that div placeholder, which said div id or class equals page or, or app or something. Paste. So everything that was the jQuery mobile code that was in the body, I copied it from old index to new index. Can I ask, um, so yeah. you started body at the end of section, why did we not go all the way down to the end of section? We did. We went to the end of section. We don't need body. We don't need body itself. It's already there. And I said, we will get back to scripts in a moment. But for the moment, I'm just copying the, the main content there. Yes. Nope, not yet. I'm doing the main body area, and then we're going to back up to the personal CSS as well as the script here. So if I go back to the old index, the old index has. Uh, meta car set, viewport, we don't need that, we don't need title really. We have this style sheet of jQuery mobile. We have a bunch of comments uh, which we could bring or not. And then we've got the font style sheet. So just to make it very easy perhaps, line 7 to 21. We've got a link to jQuery mobile. We've got a link to our custom colors. Uh, for our theme roller, and then we've got a link to our custom font. So those three, we need to put them into the head in the new index. Uh, we can put it... We can put it before this index on line 14. I'm going to make a lot of space just so that it's obvious. There's already the viewport there. And any custom CSS file most likely should be the final one, because we're going to load jQuery mobile. Then we're going to load custom colors, then fonts, then any custom CSS. Yeah, this last one here, index CSS. That'll be where all our custom CSS will go. So I got the stuff from the head that was necessary. I got stuff from body that was necessary at the very end of body. This is when we have these scripts. This is where we've got 
let's use jQuery, jQuery mobile, and then custom CSS. Well, we probably don't need this custom CSS. We probably don't need this custom CSS here. We already transferred it over to index. We would just be saying it twice. So we only need jQuery and jQuery mobile. So at the very end of the document, that's what we're seeing. We've got Cordova, overrides, custom code. We want... Yes? It, it is linked. Uh, what do you mean that it's not linked anymore? No, it still it still has to have the the source, the path to the right file as before. So we, as long as we have the those files in the right place, the code can still find it because it's still saying go to the scripts folder and find jQuery, and there it is in my scripts folder. I <coughs> I dropped in jQuery two dot one dot zip. So um, here I put the two lines of jQuery in the beginning before Cordova. So we're loading jQuery, then jQuery mobile, then Cordova, then over any platform overrides, and then custom JavaScript. From the index file, that should be everything. We've got the main section. We've got those two scripts. From the header, we've got those three CSS files. I've integrated index 0, the old index, into the new index. So I don't need the old index anymore. Index 0, I can delete it. And then to see if this works, you can try running it in the browser or the emulator. Whichever is faster, I'm going to try running it in my simulator. So our challenge here is we need to take the code from last month and put it into this month's project. And this I'll, I'll have it written up in a handout if you need it, but conceptually it should not be incredibly difficult. Conceptually, we are bringing the files from last month and putting them into the right place. That's easy. Let's drag and drop. A little bit more effort, a little bit more mind power is to figure out, OK, well, I need to integrate the two JS files and the index files. Again, that should not be incredibly complex. Logically, we should be able to see what we're putting together. Go ahead and run it and see if that, if that works. It should load up your project. It should have the last month's project either on your device or in the browser. And then we'll, we'll see how it worked. This is definitely a reason why you want to take at the beginning of the day the moment to do this first compilation because I, I didn't get a chance to do it, so I have to wait for it to do it now. And make sure you, you do it when you, as soon as you walk in.
press F5 to run it. All right, uh, one, one thing here, when we copy these items over in the JavaScript, I forgot to do this. So, um, it, it might have loaded up, but here's something. Okay, one thing we forgot here. In the when we copied uh, the old index JS into the new index JS, I I said let's copy and paste it right there. Well, we have this chunk from about line 19 to 24, which is referencing classes and IDs from the index HTML that we deleted. Remember we we cleaned up the index HTML a lot. There was originally a div there, which we deleted and put our own custom sections and all of that. So we need to do this. The JavaScript is trying to find document.getElementById uh, and doing all of this stuff here, specifically here. So um, this chunk from 19 to 24, we can delete that. That was referencing code that we removed from the index file. So we don't want that. We have to delete the parts from the old code, which in my case was 19 to 24. Um, no, the part that we took away, uh, the part that takes away the splash screen is 12. We wrote that ourselves. We need to do it from 19 to 24. So we're going to leave our splash screen code, our original console here, but we deleted the part in between 19 to 24.
So I'm going to confirm mine's working and then we'll go on. If we're having a little trouble, we'll figure it out. But um, let me just confirm mine is working. So it's launching on my device. I get the splash screen for a moment and then it goes away. And then the main app loads up. The console here uh, may display a few messages. I'm loading it in the uh, device, so I didn't get any messages. But there is uh, a, an error that doesn't matter. If you run this on a simulator, there's going to be an error about missing fav icon, which I have mentioned before, and I have said to not worry about it. There is, for some reason, the browser is going to search for a fav icon and it will give a message that it can't find it, but doesn't matter because this is not a web project anymore, it's a, it's a mobile device project. See here, see here in my console output, I do have a line that says uh, failed to load resource, the server responded with a status, and it looks scary, but if you read it, you can't find the favicon.ico file. It doesn't matter. You could put a file in the root of your project called favicon.ico to shut it up, but it's not going to matter if that's going to give us that message. We should understand what the issue is, so I'm not, uh, not going to worry about it. Now, I did mention it last time, but now it's a great time to start to look at this. I've, I've closed my simulator. I'm back on my code. Uh, have any of you ventured off to see this tab over here, Error List? This is a dynamic debugger that Visual Studio is going to run based on the files that are open. I've currently got index.js and index.html open, and if I look at this error list, I get this panel down here. It might be a little bit cluttered, so if you kind of stretch out these columns, you might see it better. But this is telling you perhaps some, uh, some quick dynamic uh, messages. Because we have line 7, use strict it is going to be strict, and it's going to possibly give you more errors than are really, really errors. But I like to look at this for it to tell me uh, if I missed things. In my case, it's telling me here, line 136 of my index.js, missing semicolon. So the code worked when we were testing it last month, but now this error list because of you strict is being very strict. So if I go look at my line 136, technically, well, I'm not missing a semicolon. I see it there. Technically, I need a semicolon right here. It looks like it's two semicolons in one line, but technically what we have there could also be written like this. Right? Opening curly brace, close curly brace. And now it's obvious that there is one line there where I didn't have a semicolon. That's a different line. Where did it go? We see it as two separate lines, but the browser is still interpreting it command, command, command. And so there's the command fn sign up, end of statement. And then end the statement of the whole submit method. So that's what it's technically complaining about. Would it call the error? There? No, I just changed it. I saved it. No, maybe you didn't, even though I've been trying to use it more. And this shouldn't really cause any problems. It's just since we're in strict mode, it says technically you should have a semicolon there. So there was no problem without having that semicolon. Now, I, I don't like to see, technically, these are warnings. One way to deal with warnings, this is a really cool trick right here, ignore them. But I, I'm not going to. You can turn off, don't show me warnings, don't show me errors, don't show me plain messages. I have errors on, I have warnings on. This is a warning. It worked, but it was a warning. 
So line 139, same sort of thing. I'm sure I'm also missing it. Yeah, line 139. Technically, if I put a semicolon after the function log in, end of statement, and then end of statement for the whole submit, semicolon there, save, it'll, get, it'll finish that one, line 42. Then we've got these other warnings, or, yeah, warnings, unnecessary semicolon, line 142. It's very strict because these are saying you don't, you technically don't need a semicolon at the end of a function definition. These are function definitions where that were built in when we created our Visual Studio, Studio uh, project. They were already there. They came from Microsoft. But this debugger thinks that merits a warning. So if you want to get rid of these warnings, you don't need a semicolon at the end of function on device ready function on pause, and function on resume. Technically, you don't need semicolons when you declare a function. If you remove those, we'll leave the one at the very, very, very end. Yes, that one we want. But then the one at the end of those three function declarations, we don't, technically don't need it. No more warnings. I have no errors, which is good. You might have errors. We'll figure those out in a moment. So no more warnings, no more errors. If I put messages, nothing was in messages. That's the third thing you can see. Show me error list for entire solution of files that are open, actually. Show me errors for currently open, current project, current document. Mm. We'll do one more thing, then we'll take a break. The CSS file. Let's open the index.css file. 26 warnings. But that's from a lot of stuff that's left over. Now, what I'm doing is a variation of what I have talked about on a previous handout. And I spent lots of time writing these handouts, so I hope you look at them, because this should not be new. In the handouts, I do mention on one of these handouts what's safe to remove and what's not safe. <clears throat> I think it's under number two, anatomy of a project. Let me confirm that. Actually, I think it's under the WW one, number three. Yeah, actually, number three. Number three has a breakdown of what's in the WW folder, and then number three, I break down line by line what these different things mean, and I mention parts that are very important to keep. So you want to keep your Cordova.js link in the HTML file, for example. In the CSS folder, basically, I say the only thing you really need, you, need to, you can remove lines 9 through 28. That's CSS. Uh, recommendation is remove these because these apply to something you've removed in the index HTML. Well, that's normal. Um, and it says in my handout also that uh, you will not see a Cordova.js file in the WW folder. That's normal. What happens is when you, every time you do run, it creates it temporarily. So you won't see it in the folder, but it will be there when we need it. So what we need to do inside of this index CSS to start off with, everything past line 3 all the way down, uh, we can remove all of this. All of this stuff here is about a blink animation, I don't need it. Uh, fade animation, I don't need it. This stuff about for the device waiting and received and listening, I, I don't need it, event, all that, I don't, I don't need it. There is a part here about some customized CSS if you go horizontal or landscape. We already set config XML to stay portrait. So this, we don't need either. This is for landscape design. We're not even going to have landscape capability in this project. We don't have the div with a class of app anymore. We're not going to use the Cordova icon anymore. So you see all of that past the 
let's see, all of that past body and universal selector I removed line 33 and down. That went from 26 errors to 12. Not errors, warnings. So we just 34 down all the way to 90? We don't need any of that. We don't need any of that, nope. What was the first part you referenced? From 34 down to 90, That we don't need any of that. I haven't done anything before 34 yet. Before I address more of these issues here, I'm going to clean up a little bit more of this document. Again, my handout spells it out, but we'll do it here. Um, basically, in my handout, I also said uh, from line 9 down to 28, we don't need this. Set a background color, a gradient, we don't need any of that. We use Theme Roller to design the color of our project background attachment, a font, we don't need that. We set up our own custom font, font size. So again, now inside of body from line, I, really from line 9 down to this empty space, 28, we don't need that. Another background, we don't need that. Font family, we don't need that. We set, um, we already set our custom font elsewhere. This might override it. And then a font size of 12. I think my fonts look a little small on the device because it says 12 pixels. A better value here would be 1M, so it dynamically changes, which is similar to saying 100%. Maybe a 1.1M, slightly larger, so that starting with 100%, it's a little bit larger. Now if I look at my error list, it went down to five warnings. And some of these warnings, you kind of have to decide how you want to deal with this. The first one, line one, the universal selector, asterisk, is known to be slow. So what this is saying, the asterisk, okay, body makes sense. Wherever there's a body tag, do the following. Wherever there's a class of whatever, do the following. Here we've got asterisk. So this is saying to everything, to every A tag, every P tag, every image tag, every class, every ID, everything, apply this uh, vendor prefixed uh, CSS. WebKit, tap highlight, color, transparent. So what this is trying to say is if a person taps and highlights your text, don't highlight it turn it invisible. Don't show that it's highlighted. Think about it. If you're in the Instagram app, in the Facebook app, in the Snapchat app, can you tap and hold and highlight anything? Unless they allow it, not really. You can't really tap and hold anything to select that text. You can't tap and hold the Instagram logo to copy and paste it. That's what that line is doing right there. Tap, highlight, color, RGBA, alpha, zero. Zero, 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 zero. It's going to be black, zero. No transparency. So this you can decide to remove the universal selector or not. It says it's known to be slow. I'm gonna leave it so there will be this warning that will keep nagging me always. If you want to get rid of that warning, the only way to fix that is remove that selector. Line 7. The property MS text size adjust is com compatible with WebKit text size and should be included as well. Okay, line 7. WebKit text size adjust. It's saying there is an MS text size adjust. WebKit 
Does anyone know what WebKit means? Different web browsers. Different web browsers have different rendering engines. The rendering engine of Google Chrome and Apple Safari, underneath the, the hood, use something called WebKit. WebKit is what allows it to render the code properly. Rendering engine. So Chrome and Safari both use WebKit. Uh, Internet Explorer uses one called Trident. Uh, Opera uses one called Chakra, I think. Or is that Edge? And then Mozilla uses Gecko. They have different rendering engines. So here it's saying, if you're using the Safari-specific code, or the Chrome-specific code, you should also use the Microsoft-specific code. That might be a good idea. Our app I may want it to apply or be used by more than one device. So the way to fix that is do what it says here. I'm going to add a new line, 8, and I'm going to type what it says. Dash ms, dash text, dash size, colon, none. Dash ms, and it's going to maybe suggest it here, text. Dash size, adjust, none. Save that. I get rid of one of the warnings. And then these other ones are going to be exactly the same sort of thing. We have the, the version of the code for Chrome devices and Safari devices. Why not also add the Firefox devices? MOZ, Mozilla Firefox, MS, Microsoft devices. It's saying on line 9, you have WebKit user select. Why not also add Moz user select none and dash ms dash user select none. Save those. These that have WebKit, Mozilla, Microsoft are vendor specific, web browser specific. A message here is saying, Matt, you're missing the plain old standard official one as well, which is just user select. The only warning I get now is the universal selector. If you'd like to do notes, target Chrome, Safari. Target Microsoft. Mozilla Firefox. And now we've got official method. Last month I mentioned vendor prefixes. Last month I said don't bother with them. So here what you could do is user select is the official one, then there's the Microsoft one, the Mozilla one, the Safari one. You could delete all three of those and just keep that one and save yourself a few bytes. But I'll keep it here so that it can make some sense. And I want to check on my device. Get used to the keyboard shortcut F5. F5 on your keyboard will launch your project on the last device that you selected from the launch menu, the standard menu. So instead of going up to the arrow, or the green, uh, the green run icon, you just press F5 to load on the last device you had. Uh, yes, uh, we should do it in the order that we did it here. Uh, let me get back to it, which was the order. 
basically user select, the non-prefix one, is the last one. Before that, the WebKit and MOS and MS one, that doesn't matter, but the last one is the official spec. So those warnings, I ran it in my simulator, it looks fine. I'm going to run it in my device. Once you've switched profiles here, or devices, you can just press F5 and that'll run with what is listed. So if I get this to work, we'll do one little test, then we'll take a break. Um, splash screen is running on my device, loads up, my text looks better, it was kind of small a moment ago. Uh, there it is on my home screen, console output. Uh, uh, this is a brand new project and my device. I'm going to create an account now. Now since you're going to be typing on a real device, perhaps create some account very quickly, right? abc at abc.com. Don't worry about putting a real big name and a huge password, you know, a at a.com. Password A. Just do it really simple because you're going to need to be typing on a real device. I'm going to create an account. a at a.com. Password A. I'm going to click the Go button. So it's still behaving the way I expect. Click go, it pops up, thanks, ready to go, log in, takes me to my login screen, nice and fast and responsive. I'm going to log in with a at a.com, password a, click go, signs me in, down at the bottom it says I've logged in with a at a.com account. I'm going to stop debugging, and then I'm going to use the, the Android force quit, I'm going to quit the app completely. Because if, uh, if I just go back to the home screen and I launch the app again, it's still in memory. I'm going to tap the, the icon to open up all open apps and then quit it. Force quit it. It's not in memory anymore. Then I'm going to go to my apps screen and I find my icon and tap it so that I load it brand new. There's the splash screen. It remembered. I, uh, I logged in and it should then take me to the login screen. So we're going to take a break and um, confirm that we're on the right track here, and uh, then we'll go on. It's 7.16. We'll be back at 7.26.